Prior to working on any sprayer, ensure the machine has been properly rinsed and any chemicals that were used have been neutralized. Also make sure to wear any applicable safety gear, which would include gloves, eye goggles, masks, and or Tyvek suits. For the purpose of this video, we were working on a machine that had not been used with chemicals. and We are not wearing full safety gear. Hi, I'm Brandon Doherty with the Toro Company. And during this TAC2 video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate how to calibrate the info center on the new Multi-Pro 1750. And this process will also apply to the new Multi-Pro Workman Sprayer. But before we begin, we're gonna need a couple of items to help us out. It's always good to keep your operator's manual handy because this will outline the process that we're going to cover in this video. Next, we're gonna need a catch test jug. We got this one from T-Jet. Lastly, we're gonna need a stopwatch. So let's get started. First, we're going to verify the output of the sprayer by performing a 15 second catch test. From this chart in the operator's manual, we see our sprayer, equipped with blue nozzles, should yield a catch test of 32 ounces in 15 seconds if the pressure is approximately 40 psi. If we do not catch the proper amount, adjust the spray pressure accordingly and perform the catch test again. Once you've verified the output of the sprayer, you're ready to spray out a known volume of water. By referencing this second chart in the operator's manual, you'll find the known volume that will be sprayed out in a five minute period. Based on the results of the previous catch test, our sprayer with blue nozzles will spray 55 gallons in five minutes. Next, we'll enter this known quantity into the info center. To access the flow meter calibration process, we'll press the center button to open the main menus, then select the calibration menu. Then select the flow cal to enter the flow meter calibration process. An advisory message will appear to acknowledge you've begun the calibration process. Next, we'll enter our known quantity of water we're going to spray out. Recalling the chart we just referenced, we're going to spray out 55 gallons. Next, we'll turn the pump on and prepare to start our spray out. This step is critical. You want to start your five minute timer at the same time you begin to spray out. It's possible to hold a stopwatch and toggle the master boom switch simultaneously, but it might be a good idea to have someone help. Now we'll let the sprayer spray out for five minutes. For the purpose of this video, we're not going to show the five minute spray out. But at the end of the five minute period, toggle the master boom switch to stop the spray out process. Then click the check mark in the center of the info center and you're done. Our machine was right on. However, it's okay if the gallons displayed here do not match the quantity you entered earlier. That's why we're performing the calibration process. Next, let's go through the speed cal process. We'll access the speed calibration process by pressing the center button on the info center to open the main menus. Then we'll select the calibration menu and finally select the speed cal process. Once again, an advisory message will appear to notify you that you've entered the calibration process. Another advisory will appear notifying you to fill the fresh water tank full of water. And then a second advisory will appear asking the spray tank be half full of water. For the purpose of this video, we've already filled our sprayer with water. Once your sprayer is ready to go, press the right hand button on the info center and you'll be ready to enter the distance of the test tr track you're going to drive. 150 feet in our case. Use the increase or decrease buttons to select your desired distance. You can see I've got a ways to go to get to 150 feet, but luckily if I hold down the decrease button, the values will start to change in increments of 10. Once you've reached your desired distance, again in our case it's 150 feet, press the right hand button on the info center and drive the test track. For the best results, start with the front tire on the starting line and end with the front tire on the finish line. And while driving the test track, do it in first gear at wide open throttle. Lastly, make sure your test track is as level and straight as possible. Once you stop the machine at the end of the test track, click the button under the check mark on the info center and you're done. Again, it's okay if the distance displayed here does not match up with the distance you just traveled. That's why we're doing the calibration. Next, we'll check our boom valve bypasses. For the highest accuracy, I'm going to perform this by monitoring my application rate while shutting off different boom sections. To monitor the application rate with a stationary sprayer, I'm going to enter a test speed. I'm going to use 3.5 miles an hour, which is the approximate speed of the sprayer in first gear at wide open throttle. Once I've got my test speed enter, I'll hit the home key. Now I'm back at the main screen, I'll turn my pump on, master, and all three boom valves. Now my application rate will display. Mine is right about 85 gallons per acre. Next, I'm going to turn off the center boom section. Notice the icon changes indicating the boom section is off. 
I can see my application rate comes right back to 85 gallons per acre. Ideally you want little to no change here. This one's set correctly. Next I'll turn up the left hand boom section. I see my application rate has decreased a bit. This tells me the bypass needs an adjustment. To adjust this, go to the problem valve at the back of the machine and adjust the red bypass knob accordingly while watching the monitor. You'll want to do this for each boom valve. I'm going to close mine and now we're set. This concludes the process for calibrating the info center. Again, if you have any questions about calibration, all the processes we've discussed are covered in your operator's manual.